okay then this lecture is going to look at what happens when the forces acting on an object are balanced or unbalanced and the two laws that deal with these situations are Newton's first law and second law Newton's first law deal with the case of balanced forces so what does Newton's first law say well, let's read the statement carefully it says that everybody continues in its state of rest or with uniform velocity unless acted upon by a resultant force so let's break down the statement what it's saying is if resultant force equals zero Newton or in other case if the forces are balanced the motion is going to be two things it can be either of two things one if the object was already at rest it will stay at rest and if the object was moving with some velocity and in some direction then it will continue with that same speed so it will move with constant speed speed cannot change which means it won't have any acceleration in a straight line so the direction can also not change in other words it cannot accelerate this thing basically means cannot accelerate so what we are basically saying is let's say you have an object this box and there are two forces acting on it well, let's say this is 7 Newton in exactly in the opposite direction there is another 7 Newton force what would be the resultant force it would be 7 minus 7 equals 0 Newton how would this object behave well if it was already moving it will continue moving in that same direction with that same speed if it was already at rest it will stay at rest this is what the Newton's first law is telling us in the case of balanced forces now the case of unbalanced forces is dealt with Newton's second law and it says that for an object of constant mass its acceleration is directly proportional to resultant force so basically what we are saying is that if resultant force is not equal to zero so it's something other than zero the forces are unbalanced now then the motion can be following things either you can speed up or you can slow down or you can change direction as well in other words what we are saying is that all these examples or all these instances are representing one thing and that is acceleration or deceleration we have looked at the topic of acceleration before and this is exactly what we wrote down before as well to speed up or to slow down or to change direction basically means to accelerate now we can actually calculate the value of that acceleration if we know the resultant force or vice versa if we and provided we also know the mass of the object and according to the law above we can write down the following things it says that the acceleration is directly proportional to force but mass must be constant and this is represented by a very simple equation the equation is F equals M A let's write down everything important in this equation F is basically the resultant force and many students make the mistake of uh, writing down just a single force here if there are more than one or two forces acting on the object then you first have to find the resultant force and then substitute it here in place of S uh, F this is mass and remember this must always be in kg when you are using this equation and this is obviously acceleration which should be in meters per second squared 
Now, just to remind you that acceleration could be calculated with the formula A equals V minus U over T for objects that were uh, moving with uh, moving in a straight line and if they were speeding up or slowing down we could calculate the acceleration using this formula so in many of the problems these two uh, formulas might be used together and let's take an example of an object here let's think about a box and the mass of that box is let's say 5 kg one force acting on it is 8 Newton the other force acting on it is 2 Newton I'll ask you what is the acceleration of this box well very simply you can say that the resultant force is 8 minus 2 equals 6 Newton and it is always towards the right so 6 can be written in place of F the mass of the object is equal to 5 and a is unknown so I can find a as 6 over 5 which will be 1.2 meters per second squared now remember acceleration is a vector so if you're asked what is the direction of that acceleration you will, should be able to tell the direction it should always be the same as the direction of the resultant force so if the resultant force is towards the right acceleration will also be towards the right so this was the case of balance and unbalanced forces now to fully understand this how you can solve problems using these two uh, cases let's solve a few examples example one here says a boy pushes a box of a boy pushes a box of 20 kg with a force of 50 Newton so he's pushing the box let's draw the force like this he is pushing the box with a force of 50 Newton calculate the acceleration of the box assume there is no friction so if the box is on a floor we are assuming that there is no friction between the box and the floor and it's just one force acting on the box well again we're going to use the formula F equals M A think about what is the resultant force is there there's only one force acting on the box in the horizontal direction which is 50 Newton so you'll just go with 50 what is the mass of the box it's 20 so acceleration can be found very easily by 50 upon 20 which should give us 2.5 meters per second squared and if I ask you what is the direction of that acceleration draw a diagram to represent the acceleration well that acceleration is in this direction same as the direction of the resultant force let's read this problem now it says a shipping container of mass 1000 kg rests on a frictionless floor okay so this is our floor and assuming there is no friction on it this is our container lying on it and the mass of the container is 1000 kg a rope pulls it to the right all right so there is a rope pulling on the box to the right causing the container to increase its speed to 20 meters per second in five seconds now remember it was at rest in the beginning so in the beginning the speed was zero now the speed is 20 and it took five seconds to increase that speed they want us to find the tension force in the rope now remember tension force all is always there whenever we have ropes or strings stretching so this will be the direction of tension and we want to find out how big the tension is going to be let's solve this example part a first of all let's try and understand what is the relationship between acceleration mass and force well we have already learned that formula just now which is F equals M a now we want to find the tension force which is T and there is no other force acting on it remember it's a frictionless floor so we can ignore friction there is no force acting in on the box other than the tension force so I can replace F with T here 
and the mass of the box is given to me which is 1000 but another problem is that I don't even know the acceleration so how do I first find the acceleration and then put it into this formula and then come back to this question and find t well we know very well that the formula of acceleration is v minus u over t if you know the initial and final velocities and the time over which that change occurred you can find the acceleration so the final velocity of the box went to 20 and initially it was at rest and this change took place in 5 seconds this tells us that the acceleration was 4 meters per second squared so this I can substitute here again and find out the tension so the mass was 1000 and acceleration is now 4 which tells me that tension is going to be 4000 Newton and the direction of tension remember was towards the right as you can see from the diagram so part A is done now what does the part B says it says subsequently so it's the same box same situation but now something else is happening subsequently the same container is pulled by an additional leftward force of 5000 Newton so now remember that our tension was 4000 Newton we just found it and now there is an additional tension force in the opposite direction which is supposedly 5000 Newton they want us to find the resultant acceleration and also state its direction well first of all we again start with the same formula what is the uh, relationship between acceleration and force this is the formula that connects the two quantities now remember there are two forces acting on the box and we also know the mass of the box the mass of the box is 1000 we have to find the acceleration but the resultant force will be the difference of these two forces since they are acting in the opposite direction 5000 and 4000 so if I subtract the two 5000 minus 4000 this is what I can write in place of the resultant force so this turns out to be 1000 but keep in mind the direction of the resultant force the direction of the resultant force will be in this direction so because the bigger force is 5000 Newton so resultant force is 1000 we can divide the mass and acceleration turns out to be 1 meters per second squared since the resultant force was towards the left acceleration should also be towards the left alright I'll see you guys in the next video